So, uh, my name is Roger. Uh, I'm from uh, Avinode, and we actually worked with uh, a platform for finding a uh, private charter, selling or renting uh, your private charter. So if you ever have an airplane you want to rent to somebody or you need a private plane to fly, uh, our platform is uh, one to use. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about refusing estimates, which was kind of fun when uh, I was asked, how long time do you need for this presentation? So I said, yeah, we'll see. How much time have I got? <laughs> Um, but the idea was that at Avenue where I work, we don't really work with estimates. Uh, we try to just uh, say we need to do a bunch of things, and a thing takes normal on an average time. But that means it's, it's hard to know, well, if I tell you to do five things, will you be done in five times? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, and And... As a team lead and developer, I was very firm on we don't give estimates from our team because several of our teams had been burned on uh, on the estimates they gave that they would they would be held towards them even though they weren't really responsible for them in the end. Uh, so I gave this as a breakfast presentation to management, sales, and techies, which uh, sparked some discussions, and uh, we went from there. Uh, so. I started out with, what's an estimate? And uh, from the Merriam-Webster, it says it's trying to judge or, or find the value or significance of something, uh, or the rough size, and so on. But it doesn't really talk about the future. So normally, when we do estimates, is to estimate something now to use that for something later. So if I would estimate the size, it would stay the same size. If is if I estimate something that could change for the future, uh, I might make a really, really bad estimate of that. So, why do we even make an estimate? Uh, there's many reasons why I would, I would want an estimate, but for, for a company, it could be to update your portfolio. Should we even continue with this product? Should we start introducing a new project? Uh, in, into our sales material. Uh, how much money do we need to invest over the next few months or the year to do roughly what we think we want to do? Um, or do we have the manpower or the funds to continue working with this uh, stuff? Or could it be that if we decide to do this, when can we maybe tell the customers uh, that uh, they can have this product. Or, as in my part, working with a team, do we even know what we're doing? Is this a big thing? So, oh, we are going to build a trading system. Check, that's one thing. Or do we need to break it down to something we can start implementing? Uh, so the team use an estimate uh, usually just to say, can we do this in a day or two? Otherwise, we probably need to break it down into smaller things that we can understand. Uh, and I have had an experience that you do this estimate for sales or business or, uh, or for management or, or somebody who needs that for the portfolio and say, from the, what you know, what do you think it would take to do this? And I would answer. 42, whatever that 42 means, and then this would happen, right? They ask for an estimate and then treat them as deadlines. And the silly thing for that is that the estimate is, if you went to the weather forecast and you asked, will it be sun tomorrow? And he said, yes, would you hold them to it? If, they, if it wasn't sun tomorrow, would you make them have sun tomorrow? It's kind of a ridiculous uh, question, but if you make an estimate from what you knew today and then it didn't turn out that way tomorrow, it's not anything really you can do about that estimate anymore. You can try to solve the problem, but you can't fix the estimate anymore. So, from that, there's actually like a condensed reason for the estimate, I think. Somebody needs to make a decision, <laughs> and that's really, really hard and scary when you have to do it with something unknown. It's much easier if you know everything. 
So if I take A and B and know the value of them, I know what the sum is going to be. But if I don't really know what it's going to cost, and I don't really know how much I'm going to make, will it be profitable? Uh, it's hard. I, I'll try to get an estimate for one of the numbers, and then I can blame them when the value, uh, end value gets to be incorrect. But I usually try to turn it around then and say, well, instead of me as a techie telling you how much time or money I need to build it, why don't you as management or sales tell me how much money do I have? How much can I spend on this? Because obviously you know how much money we're going to make on it. Or you know when we need to deliver it, so I know the actual deadline. Not, not when we want to, or just when we actually need it. And then I can answer the question instead, do I think we can make that deadline, or do I think that we can make that budget? Usually, they say, that's really, really hard to estimate. Yes, it is. So is software. <clears throat> Then we get into the estimates. Going back to the forecast, the estimates, they're not commitments, and they're not negotiable. Again, going back to the, to the weatherman, you ask, is it going to be sun tomorrow? And he said, no, I think it's going to be raining. Yeah, well, I would have liked it to be sunny. What can we do about it? Can you work a bit on your estimate? If you are two, maybe or you get some more funds. It like, doesn't really matter. It's my estimate from what I knew. Now, if you come back to me and say, you said this project is going to take this much amount of time, what can I change in my requirements to make it cheaper or faster? That's something very different, because then you're not asking me to change my estimates you're asking me to change the definition of what we need to do, uh, do and then make a new estimate from that, from whatever knowledge I have. And we also have a very, sometimes different knowledge on what is hard and what is easy. So I'll use some XKCD uh, slides to sig signify that. Uh, sometimes when you, you ask for something in the system, the, the asker might be very surprised on the answer. Oh, that's easy or that's hard. And I think this really illustrates that. The, basically, they take a picture and we want to know if it's taken in a national park. And the driver says, yes, that's easy. I'll use uh, GPS information. Oh, and I need to know if it's a picture, uh, a picture of a bird. Yeah, that's going to be a bit harder. And if we haven't done that before, it's, I mean, this, this one says five years and a research team, sometimes you don't even know because you've never done it before. If you've never done it, it's, it's going to be hard. Uh, we're still working on AI, I think. We thought it's going to be really easy to make computers act as people and really hard to make a computer play chess well. That was a really st bad estimate. Turned out the other way around. It was easy-ish to make a computer play chess well. Uh, we're still working on it to act as a computer, I think, uh, as a person, I think. So when you ask for an estimate, what are you asking for? Well, it could be calendar time. Like, can we have this done before summer? Or it could be like a monetary cost, which kind of includes uh, manpower. Uh, can we do it? within five men months or with five million kronos or some other uh, limit. Uh, what's the effort? I, I think the effort here is more, do we think this would be hard rather than, uh, than just uh, take time? Uh, or is there a big risk with, uh, with this estimate? Most of the time, I think the one asking for the estimate doesn't really know what they want the number for. Um, then I think it's a waste of doing it, and we can avoid doing that. Uh, and when we actually do an estimate, I think there are some really important points on, on that number. Who will do it? I think if I would write, if somebody asked me to write the Scala program, 
it would take longer than if Magnus did it. Well, usually you do an estimate and then it takes a few months and a different team should implement it. And it's, uh, it's, it's hard. It doesn't really give anything, I think. How will you do it? Uh, what technology do we, will we be allowed to use once we actually implement it? That's also sometimes overlooked. When will we do it? So, oh, we can do this in uh, two weeks. Perfect. So we'll start on December 20th, and uh, you will be done two weeks after that, right? Like, no, that's, that was a bad timing to do that. Or even worse, in Sweden, July and August. I mean, we don't do anything, right? <laughs> uh, basically close. That's at least what my US office thinks. Uh, what else will we do during the development of this? Usually we're interrupted. Or um, my team is. I mean, we we try to stay uninterrupted, but I mean, things happen, production, real life, whatever. Uh, and will anything prevent us from doing it? It's kind of funny. We we built a system to. I mean, uh, we built for swiping your credit card to buy uh, to to make a flight uh, with uh, Amex, uh, American Express in this case. And it could seem like a trivial problem, except that our average transaction is about uh, twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, with the top end at a half a million dollars. And those transactions need usually some more validation and checking that they can be <laughs> uh, kosher. And we did that for a couple of different uh, currencies, and we thought Amex works in the whole world. We have it in the US, we have it in Europe, we have it in uh, Great Britain, Canada. How hard could it be to add Canada? And they said, yeah, we just need to have the contract signed and some things. And this was in November. And uh, by January, no, February, we actually had it implemented. Well, not the following year, the year after that. So it took us uh, about 14 months to add one currency because there was a contract issue that prevented us from actually implementing it. That was not in our plan when we estimated how long it would take. So if we fail the estimate, is there a consequence? Because if, if there isn't any consequence, life continues as normal, does it really matter? Do, should we do the estimate? I had a boss that gave uh, me these uh, four consequences failure. I think they're pretty good. Uh, the first, uh, well, this one, the, the cheapest one, it doesn't matter, then we don't do it. Uh, there's a loss of face. It's embarrassing. You know, you have some spelling mistakes on the web page or something like that. It doesn't really matter. There is a loss of money. You may maybe cost you a few 10,000 kronas or 100,000 kronas. Uh, it will be a hiccup to the company, but nothing bad. Uh, and then there's some serious money. That's usually when we talk, when you start having to maybe lay off people or canceling products. It's a, it's more than a hiccup. There will be no bonuses this year. Uh, problem. And then there's a loss of life. That's also pretty serious when you fail on that. Uh, I think some people might have serious money below loss of life, uh, but I, I think this is a way to present it. Some of those might include jail time, if you miss an estimate. Also, that's something often missed when you're asked about, can you make an estimate? So yeah, what's the consequences if I don't make it? If somebody's going to yell on it, me, that's on uh, maybe loss of face or nothing else. I'll close my ears. So then we got on to actually making an estimate. Let's say we have decided we want to make an estimate because it's really important. Yeah, so do you want a single number, 42? I'm going to be done in 42. That's what I'm going to take. Or do you want, like, oh, I'm going to be done in 30 to 45? Or, well, you know, there's a 50% there's a chance that I'll be done in 40, and there's a 90% chance I'll be done in 50, and there's a 99% chance I'll be done in 55. There's still that long tail that I will never be done. That happens. Is that what we want? Because if we do, then there's usually four numbers that we use to make some estimate. And this depends on what paradigm you use to actually make estimates and if you want the critical pass and so on. But these are fairly easy. Uh, there's the one, if you ask a developer, 
how long time will this take? There's optimistic, yeah, I'll do it in 10 days. That's, that should be done because ev I will be here every day and nothing will interrupt me and uh, nobody will change the specs uh, and uh, nothing preventing me from doing it. So that's like every day at work, right? Uh, then there is uh, most likely, uh, maybe not 10 days, it seems I'm always a bit delayed, so I'll say 15 days. Or the pessimist is, there's no way I will not be done in like a month. I don't see how it would never be done in a month. Well, I might get sick. Yeah, that could be one of them. Uh, and then you can use that to maybe calculate some expected value, some, something in the middle that you can use some um, variance and to give some kind of probabilistic, you know, we think this is going to take 42, we'll charge the customer for 50 and there's a very small chance that we'll lose money. Remember that I work on internal projects, so there's not really any other customer than ourselves, uh, which means it's easier to say that something changed. But basically you go, uh, you have the optimistic value and you have the pessimistic value. You have some most likely, usually is still on the left on the most probable value, which goes more towards pessimistic. And basically the a nor a common formula is to take the optimistic plus uh, pessimistic and four of the most likely divided by six and you get some kind of, we are likely to get within this. Then if you take the pessimistic minus uh, optimistic divided by six, you get some kind of standard variation of, well, yeah, I will get 15 or, well, maybe 12 to 17-ish. Uh, so you, you can do that and then you can use those, you can add them up, you can get the most probable path and uh, the least chance of getting fees or whatever. But we probably don't even know what we want. At least in my projects, we get kind of, I want a feature that kind of sorts stuff in this way and present them in a good way to the user. How long will that take? Yeah, it's like, I don't know. And I've changed my mind. No, it should be something else. <laughs> Uh, why did that change the plan? Uh, and here, you, uh, some people do know what they want, of course. I've been in projects where you actually do plan and you will tell them all the obstacles, such as, you can't do this, it's against the law. And the project owner says, yes, we know, we'll change the law. Not a problem, that's gonna take three years, but that's what it normally takes to change the law in Sweden. So, not a problem, proceed. Most projects are not like that. So, solution. I know a lot of projects I worked in, we use padding. You make up a number, like this, and then you triple it, you add some extra time, and then the product owner gets it and double it, and then the business analyst uh, gets it and add another two weeks and double that, and you have a number. And usually you make use of that time because in the end, if you have the time, you will use it. You will polish that code. Uh, it's, it's like a budget. By the end of it, you will use all of it and maybe ask for more. You're not going to return it, are you? It was there. Somebody gave you four weeks to build this. I'm going to use the four weeks. Um, so I don't think it's, I don't really like that padding either. And I don't really have a solution, sorry. <laughs> uh, but I've noticed when you work with, if you have transparency, so our team, we try to actually list what we'll do in a project down to graspable things. Um, then we will prioritize and categorize. So what's important? Uh, what do we need to be able to test the product on a, on a customer? Uh, what do we need before we actually bring in more than a handful of customers, the ones that we can apologize to because they had such a hard onboarding time? Also try to get the stakeholders, uh, yeah, you say you actually need this, but is it that you really like it? Uh, so you categorize it from need, want, maybe develop the same feature in multiple uh, stages. 
be transparent with progress. So the thing is, I think if you don't have the deadlines, it's easy to get developers to say how they're actually progressing. Otherwise, if you have deadlines, everybody's on track until somebody else's pushes a deadline forward and everybody says, yes, I didn't have to say that I didn't make the deadline. Uh, I got two weeks extra, perfect. Uh, be perceptive to stakeholder needs. Try to actually understand why do they need stuff. So they might sometimes say, in this case, for a, we, I promise the customer to, they will have this feature in a month. Yeah, why did you do that? That was stupid. Don't do that. That's very different from saying, oh, the customer is going to trade show in a month, and they would like to show it there. Oh, so you didn't make up that month. They actually, there's actually a good reason. It's like, I got really good Christmas presents in January. The kids will be so happy. They just missed them for Christmas. So there are de deadlines that are relevant and that you can try to make. But with that knowledge, you can also try to, to be open to changes and, and try to adapt what you're delivering to make it good for that deadline. Maybe not everything you asked for, but something good enough. And also be transparent about dependencies. If you're dependent on something externally, show that. Uh, it could be contracts, it could be hardware, could be external software, you don't know. Um, if, if you are, in my case, we're working with APIs that weren't existing yet, how long will it take to integrate with them? 42, probably, something, months in this case. Uh, for the teams and sometimes uh, the stakeholders and product owners, uh, try to make a graspable scope of each feature. Make it smaller so you can remove stuff or add it. Uh, keep track of your dependencies. Be open with prioritization and reprioritization. Yeah, I know yesterday you said something that was important, but we hadn't started on it yet, so if you change your mind, please do. It, that's much better than implementing something that nobody wants. Descoping. You're never going to need everything you thought you're going to need. Try to, to build the important stuff first. So, again, this was for internal. Try to validate why you need an estimate. If it's just because it will make your life easier, but you make somebody else's life much harder, or having them lie to you, maybe it's better to not do that. Um, the estimates could often lead to blame, stress, and mistrust of oh, those developers, of oh, those businesses. They promise everything. I mean, because they never have to build it and stay late or whatever. Uh, the, the, don't misuse them. Uh, maybe it's enough to just split the features, as we do. Uh, we've, I've heard of this. We split features, and then they start having story cards, and then they go down to T-shirt size. And then they say, yeah, this is either something or it's not something. That's a st that is the story point. Either we do it or we don't. And if you have a lot of them, in the end, it will it's going to work. In the short time, you might be very far off. But often, the story points were also, in my experience, very far off in the short term. But they would average over time. Uh, so in the short time, it doesn't, really, uh, doesn't give any value. And in the long term, it doesn't matter. So instead, measure the prog uh, your progress and adapt. Uh, and that goes, especially for my team, uh, which in that case, I, oh, now they changed their minds again. Yes, that's good. That means we are building the right thing. Uh, so don't be afraid of that. But it sometimes can lead to a somewhat chaotic plan. Uh, especially in the beginning of a project, if you have a new team uh, building a new software where you don't really know the business model yet, uh, how long is, is it going to take? It's going to take a little while to stabilize and try to get a plan forward. Uh, so this again, XKCD. I think everybody's seen the progress uh, bar in Windows that could jump a bit in the early days. I think now they're just so working. <laughs> So that was it from me, uh, so 25 minutes, that's what I needed. <laughs>